Anyone here ever woke up on the wrong side of the bed before? Don't let me be the only person in this service. Come on now. All right. Uh, in our house, when someone wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, it's customary to say, go back to bed. Okay? <laughs> try the other side. Usually that's my wife talking to me, just to make that all clear. Try the, try the other side of the bed and then come out here. Uh, we, we all know what it's like on any morning to just wake up on the wrong side of the bed. And what I've found to be unique about that experience is um, I can't even always connect the dot as to why it feels so frustrating to wake up that morning. Like sometimes it's obvious. It's like, okay, I'm going through a situation. Uh, something took place the night before, uh, or I'm in this long stretch of just hard decision making. But sometimes, isn't it unique, even during the holidays, you just wake up annoyed, ready to kick something. I said something, not someone. Okay, just very intentional. Just, just very like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't feel, and that's what we go to, I don't feel at peace. I don't feel easy. I don't feel calm. I don't feel whole. In fact, I even have a little bit of an unrest going on. Like something's off here. And this morning, what I want you to discover is that in that moment, there is what I'll call the missing Peace, the missing peace. Now, and we'll throw that up on this, the screen there so this next part will make sense. Peace is not spelt the way you grammar people would want me to spell peace. I understand that. It's intentional. There's times in our lives where things feel off and I would like to suggest to you and then we're gonna explore scripture together that the reason why things feel off sometimes is because we're missing peace in our lives. We're just missing something that would bring us peace, satisfaction, a, a, a calm approach to the day, the task, whatever it is. And so we're gonna talk about, well, what do we do with missing peace? Where, where do we go then to find peace? Now, let me ask you, what's the first thing you do when you walk into a dark room? Turn the lights on. Very good. You're much smarter than the 930. They had no idea what to do. <laughs> we turn the lights on, right? How many of you, you've got those rooms in your house where you're like, I've been in this room so many times. I don't even have to turn the light on. You think you're so good until you bang your shin on the bed that's been there forever, okay? Stub your toe on the same piece of furniture. Furniture didn't move. You knew the room. You've been in the room multiple times. And yet, even there, you would have been better off turning on the lights. One of the first things we do when we walk into a dark room, or we should do, is we, we do one of these. You slide the hand on the wall, right? It was here yesterday, I know it. Where did it go? And we search for light because walking through a dark room will inevitably leave us banging into something, wasting time, fumbling around, trying to figure it out when all we had to do was turn on the lights. Stay with me. Many of us walk through life in a dark room looking for something to light the way. And we might call that something a career, a relationship, an experience, financial gain, and we're fumbling through life looking for something to fix the missing piece. And inevitably, if we find that thing, do you know what happens? The bulb goes out. <laughs> it only stays bright for so long. Man, I thought this would do it. So let me try something else. I thought this would fix me. So let me try something else. And we're constantly looking for something to light up our lives, to give us that sense of peace. And I would offer to you today that you and I do not have to wander in darkness, that we don't have to fumble our way through life looking for a light switch, but rather the beauty of Christmas is God loves you and he sent his son into this world for you. He has given us the light of the world so that we might not wander in the dark anymore. Here's what a man named Isaiah said regarding Christmas. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. 
For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. And as I read this verse this week, when I was reading, I was having some days where I was waking up on the wrong side of the bed. And I, I really just felt God bringing this verse like as joy to me, as hope to me, as light to me because of two significant statements that are made. One is the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Hey, God sees us in our darkness and that's comforting. Because there's nothing like feeling like you're alone. Like this holiday season, no one understands, no one gets it, no one knows what I'm going through. And the comfort that we find in this verse is God actually sees the darkness that you're walking in. Like he knows you struggling through life. He sees the brokenness. He sees the times where you attempt to find light, to find joy, and it doesn't work. He sees that. One of the greatest needs that you and I have as humans is the need to be seen, the need to be known. Like, does anybody care? Does anyone see me? And this verse reminds us, God does see you in your darkness. He does see you looking for light. He does see you searching for hope. Now, here's the second part that's so beautiful. It says, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. In the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Could you imagine how horrible this verse would be if it was the people who walk in darkness? (laughs) Ha ha, too bad. (laughs) That would be horrible. If God's response to us was figure it out. Go at it on your own. Try some things. See if you can reach me and then we'll talk. That's not the Christmas story. The hope of Christmas is that God sees those living in a land of deep darkness and a light shines. Hear this, because maybe for you, you think the only way to experience the light of Jesus is to be worthy of his light, to be deserving of his light, to be good enough for his light. No, no, no. Notice it's those living in deep darkness. Like God's not saying get cleaned up and you'll start to see the light. He's saying, while you're in deep darkness, I'm gonna come to you. I'm going to descend into the darkness. My daughter is seven and um, she's still like, she does not wanna go near the basement without a per- another human. Just, and, I, and I can relate, I, I understand that feeling. Not in my thirties when I was a kid, okay? Calm down, I can do it now. You're like, oh, okay. I don't want to go down there. And she'll always, even if it's just stay at the top of the steps while I run down and grab something, dad. It's like, I'm not descending into the darkness. Anything can be down there. Yeah, toys and cats, like fun things. But I'm not going down there. And I just thought like our heavenly father looks at a land in deep darkness. And instead of saying, I'm not going down there, he says, I'll go. What? I will come and be with those in deep darkness. Would you find comfort in that this season? Whoever you're with today, tomorrow, this week, whatever your holidays look like, you have a God who says, I will descend and meet you where you are. How? Well, Isaiah goes on to tell us, and I'd love for us to read this together. It's a very familiar Christmas verse. Isaiah 9, 6. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Comfort. Peace. Hey, the burden's off you. I mean, you know what's gonna happen next year, right? It's 2024, it's an election year. This is no surprise to any of you. Don't act like, what, I didn't know. Yes, you knew. (laughs) Guess what? The government doesn't have to be on your shoulders. You can breathe easy. You can be light. You can have peace. Because God says, I will descend as a child. Like the lowliest the smallest, the most humble of beings, 
helpless, completely dependent on the care of another. God says, I'm not gonna come figuring it all out. Like I'm gonna come as a helpless baby. He, he relates, he understands that. A son is given. And then Isaiah gives us these names for who he is. And I wanna focus on the Prince of Peace because you and I are often missing peace in our lives. This great light that has come is Jesus. He declares, I am the light of the world. Going through life without peace is like walking through life in the dark. And God says to those in the dark, I have something for you. I will give you my son, the Prince of Peace. So let's understand this word peace because to you and I, we're not gonna grasp the magnitude, the beauty of this word, the way the original hearers of this prophecy would have in their Jewish culture. And the word is shalom. Go ahead and say that, shalom. It's peace, it's wholeness, it's completeness. It is a lacking of nothing. Like it's not just a piece of it. The, the idea, the concept, the belief of shalom is restoration. Not just the absence of conflict, but the restoration of things that are broken. Like fixing it, putting it back together. This is the prince of shalom. God says, I'm gonna give you him. You and I experience moments of unrest and brokenness and things are not the way they could be and should be. And we look around us and we look in us and we see this is just not right. And there's hurt, there's pain, there's trauma, betrayal, all of it. And we go through life saying, maybe this will fix the missing piece. Maybe this will do it. Maybe I'll try that. And God says, no, all of that will fail you. It will not compensate for the missing piece that you have. I will give you the very Prince of Shalom the very Prince of Peace. And there's two words for us to try this Christmas Eve to understand how beautiful this is. And the first word is the word given. What did we read? For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is, say it with me, given. Given. Here it is that a child is given to us. How many of you like gifts? Are you kidding? Well, if you don't like them, I'll take them then. <laughs> Give me your gifts today. I will gladly open your gifts. I love gifts. I love receiving gifts. Because all I have to do is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't get caught up in the how much did you spend on me and I will match you game. If you bought me a car, I got you a magnet. That's all I could afford this year. Thank you. I went through Financial Peace University. I'm doing homemade cookies. I will take your expensive things. Thank you. <laughs> gift giving and gift receiving is awesome. Just, just receive, just, just give. Just. So the father looks at us in deep darkness and he doesn't say, well, I've got your way out. The son is bartered. You start doing some good deeds. You start cleaning up your life. You get enough faith and then maybe, maybe you can get the son. That's a paycheck mentality. That's a work for it mentality. Hey, Christmas is a son is given, given. And when someone gives you a gift, it's a simple, thank you, receive it. Don't try to pay them back for it. Don't try to match them for it, receive it. Peace is given to you and I today. You can go into this family moment that you will go through over these next few days and say, I've got peace that I've received. Despite what's going on around me or even in me, I have received peace. Who is he? It's Christ. The apostle Paul, who imagine his story. He has in his story, his background, moments where he oversaw the murder of Christians and then becomes one. Talk about someone who needs peace in their life. Writes this, for he himself is our peace. Jesus is our peace. So that means you can let other people and other things off the hook because they'll never satisfy you the way Christ will anyway. 
So you can love freely today those you maybe don't even want to see. You can engage in conversations instead of avoiding others. You can receive gifts and give gifts. And even in the midst of tragedy and trauma, which many of us this season magnifies, isn't it unique? The holidays almost act like a magnifying glass in our lives. The good things become better and the hard things become harder. And we enter into a space and there's joy and celebration and there's sadness and tragedy all mixed in. It is, it is really such a unique time of the year. And the stability that you and I long for is not found horizontally. It's found in the Prince of Peace who has come. Hope you're receiving that today. Well, what about for those who say, okay, well, I've said yes to Jesus. I've received him. And yet I still wake up on the wrong side of the bed. I still have moments where I don't feel right. I don't feel whole. I'm missing shalom. What would you say to me? Well, let's read again what Isaiah wrote. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. There's a truth that outweighs what we feel and experience in the moment. There's something we go back to. There's a hope that we cling to. And this hope is that the shalom, the peace of this one who has been given has no ending. Which means, watch this, your chaos, your tragedy, your darkness cannot snuff out the light of the world. No matter how dark it gets, no matter how tragic it feels, no matter what you and I face, and there are things we face that we should never face, feels horrible to go through the brokenness in this world. And yet the brokenness is not strong enough to snuff out the light. That's our hope. John 1, 5 says this, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. How horrible this would be if it said, man, the light shines in the darkness, but just gotta let you know, there's some really dark things you could walk through that could really take out the light of the world. There's some things that this is so heavy, so wrong, so evil, this could destroy the light of the world. No, the darkness has not overcome Jesus. I hear that, yay. Look at that, little. let's go, Josie. The darkness can't overcome the light of the world. Can't do it. Hey, what you're facing, what you're going through, it's not greater than the light of the world. And that is not to diminish what you go through because what you're going through is hard. It's trauma. It's evil. It's wrong. It's a tragedy. And in the midst of that despair, we can still say, oh, I've got the light of the world. I've got peace beyond understanding. Can I remind you of who you are because the son has been given? Peter writes this, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Man, today I wanna proclaim, I've been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. I wanna proclaim because Jesus came to this world, because the son was given, because he descended into the darkness, I've been called out of that darkness. I don't live hopeless any longer. I might wake up on the wrong side of the bed, but I still wake up on the wrong side of the bed with the Prince of Peace. And I take that any day. Jesus stepped out of heaven to call us out of the darkness. He loves you. In all the gifts that you receive this week, my prayer is that you have said yes to Jesus. That you don't go through life any longer, fumbling through a dark room, looking for the light switch, missing peace. You've got hope. You've got joy. You've got the savior of the world. And if not, St. Augustine in the fourth century Pens it so beautifully what life is like without him. He writes this, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee. I know what it's like to have a restless heart. I know what it's like to think this will do it. If I could just experience this, 
If I could just get here in life, if I could just have that, if I could just feel this, I, I know that it's, it's a restless way to live. You don't have to be restless any longer. You and I have the Prince of Peace because he's been given. Look at this. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. That's what he's done. He's brought light to your heart. Do you know him today? Have you received him? Have you said yes to him? And on the hardest days, may you remember, the truth is, his peace has no end. Man, there are days, and today might be one of them, where you just gotta step away from the dining room table and take a quick minute and be like, oh, Jesus, these are your people. <laughs> and I have peace. Who wants cookies? <laughs> Come on, you're gonna have those moments. You're gonna have them. You've got peace. Because peace is found in him. Can I pray that you would experience that peace today? Would you bow your heads as we pray? Heavenly Father, I pray for every person in this room, this space. I thank you that we pause this morning and we read your word and are reminded that you gave us peace and you gave us great peace. The Prince of Peace, whose peace has no end. May we remember that truth in the hardest moments and in the most joyous ones. There is nothing that can satisfy us like your son and there's no level of despair that you do not know. You see us in the darkness and you've sent a great light and we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.